Hey, Fanari, how's things? Hey, good, good. Sorry, I need to clear my throat. Um, but hey, guys, uh, I'm Fernari. Uh, also, Kevin, uh, as uh, as Rich called me in the um, uh, in the last video. So if anyone was wondering who who the hell Kevin is, uh, that's me, guys. Hi, I'm Kevin Fernari. I do marketing and uh, community management at SCT, and uh, I'm with Umbrella here. Hi, guys. Yep, uh, Umbrella Corp Gamer here, also called Dean, and. Uh... Gamer, IT guy, your friendly neighborhood ginger. So <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And um, Umbrella, before uh, before we start, um, like I said, I do I do marketing and community management. So I would view my job kind of as a as a PR job, right? Yeah. Um, for for a big part. And as a PR person, uh, that means that sometimes uh, I'm a liar, and I have to apologize to you because I lied to you. We actually do have a special guest, oh. and the special guest, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be Demir, a.k.a. Russell, and he will be coming on shortly. In one second, I just pinged him. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> And also, I will ping Dixie because she wanted to join in. Mm, she said she was sick or something during the week, didn't she? Um. Oh, I actually don't remember. Uh, mm. I'm horrible community manager. <laughs> Yo, Russell, what's up, man? <laughs> How you guys doing? Hi, good, Russ. Good. Nice to meet you, man. Hi, hey. Russ. Nice to meet you, man. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm doing good. So, awesome. uh, so yeah. Um, do you want to announce him in for Nari and? Uh. I mean, yeah, Russell, we, we're just doing intros. Uh, I tricked Umbrella and I said he wasn't going, you weren't going to be here, and now you are. So, <laughs> uh, so I'm just trolling Umbrella all day. And I, I also said that um, he he was losing his mind for the uh, the scrap bot. So we're we'll uh, or the junk the junk drone. So we'll take a yeah. look at that in a bit. But yeah, feel free to intro yourself as well here and uh, say whatever we want, and then uh, we'll um, figure out what the schedule is. Yeah, I'm Russell. I am the game designer on Drunk Punk and Gunsmith at the moment at SCT. Um, so yeah, I mean, just hit me with it, you know? <laughs> great. Well, first off, um, great great to actually meet you, Russ, as well. So it's actually nice to get yeah. a face to the name as well. Yeah, no worries, man. It's the first time I've actually seen Fanari in almost the flesh as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So I'm also... Uh, someone wants to join in as well so i will try to get her in but um yeah basically um to get everyone uh on the same page we're talking a lot about tutorial stuff we're talking a lot about um the uh the new monolith uh as yeah. well big announcement that we're going to be focusing on um on m uh monolith one to start out with and uh then also so some of the new features like the the scrap drone is something I'm super excited about, but uh, yeah, Umbrella, if you wanna, if you wanna ask or target any of the topics in one direction, um, I, I imagine. Hey, what's up, Dixie? Hey, Dixie. Um, I Hi. imagine that um, Russell will be doing more of the talking than I will, but yeah, I can pick up any of the slack or anything. And yeah, Umbrella, it is it is your show. Feel free to ask us whatever, and I can interject whenever we need to. Yeah, perfect. Um, yeah, so Russ, I'll just I'll actually start off with uh, one of the first topics that Fenari mentioned there, which was the tutorial. Um, you probably went over. I think you were going over a couple of the pre previous videos that uh, I had up. Um, you went through it, and it was kind of it became what well, became from a simplistic talk became very elaborate in and complex because we kind of delved deep into the into the roots. We tore it apart and put it back together again of what what we thought it should be or how how how, they, how we think it should go. Um, are we able to find out more like uh, on your plan, like be tutorial based, like getting started for the new gamer? Considering, um, as you said, you know, you're you're kind of you're going back to basics a bit. You're going back to Monolith One to kind of try and get a bit of a redo yeah. and and you know, uh, pretty much uh, bring the current experienced players as well as new players into what could effectively be not a brand new game, but a brand new way of playing to kind of get re reacquainted, reintroduced, and you know start a new game without having to have any major expectation for them it'll be a bit of rediscovery um just in terms of that that that, that tutorial is there any kind of you know specific yeah I'm, actually just, I'm very frantically trying to find my notes because i have a really good <laughs> uh this is written down 
better than I can explain it if I can find it somewhere. I, I can interject for 15 seconds and cut me off whenever you want, Russell. I think um, a, a big thing that I talked with Russell a bit about this and I brought up like, oh, hey, like we um, we did a focus group in case anyone didn't know. And um, we said like, hey, maybe like gently nudging the players to um, start the tutorial or have like a big chunk of the tutorial be <clears throat> under monolith one. Mm -hmm. um and so when russell heard that he's like oh i am so glad you said this he had like all these uh, <laughs> all these plans to have a majority of it under monolith one as well uh we also leaked that the um that we're probably not going to be rebuilding the bridge uh but we are going to be doing a lot of cool uh cool tutorial stuff around the monolith bridge. one yeah the the uh you know like the bridge that used to be broken yeah. Uh, on monolith one yeah we're we're no longer repairing that it's already uh it's already pre-repaired from the the images yeah. you sent yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, that really frustrated me as well yeah so yeah um the tutorial is uh to be honest a bit shit because <laughs> it doesn't really speak to you quite literally doesn't speak to you it. Exactly. Like, yeah. it brings you into the game in the mm. wrong place because it starts you setting up your stuff for outside of the crash site. Mm -hmm. And then you get immediately called back to Monolith 1 where you then have to set up your factory, but then there's no way in which it tells you to actually set up your factory. So I kind of mm -hmm. want to have a far more in-depth and concise tutorial which starts in a clearer place, which also kind of ties into the new spawn location that we're going to be doing mm -hmm. um, with a whole new area to accompany that. And it's going to be a lot more linear. And um, when I get around to doing the Monolith 2 rework as well, that is also something I want to kind of focus on because Monolith 2 happens and it just kind of goes, have fun, go and do it. Yeah. yeah. And I remember sitting there at the first, I'm like, hey, there's this whole new tech tree that I don't really understand and all of this kind of stuff. So, yeah, pretty much just more details, a lot more simplistic walking you through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do, um. Can you talk, uh, this is a little bit further into the future, can you talk a little bit about how you want to segment the tutorial, especially with uh, Monolith 2? Like, instead of, like, so you said, um, just, like, right now, it's just like, hey, here are the objectives, go have fun. Uh, mm -hmm. Are there any ideas you have for segmenting, either general or specific, for Monolith 2? Uh, not so much with Monolith 2 so far, mm -hmm. but definitely with Monolith 1, I want to split it into... Um, a bit more world exploration based quest yeah. design type stuff where with the rework on monolith one i'm going to be getting rid of the um the whole biological key type stuff because it doesn't really fit in with the new themes that we're going for with the reworked lore and story um and as the general in, monolith progression as well as in removing it all together permanently or a rework and a, and a redesign of how it will you're probably come in again some point down the line mm -hmm. in development okay but for now it's just, it, yeah, it's just, it doesn't really, it don't feel like it fits. Could I just, um, add, could I just ask as well, in in addition to Fenari's uh, thing on, on the tutorial, um, well, are you, is there a plan where it's just going to be expanded? Um, I think one of the kind of uh, takeaways we had from the last conversation, from that conversation, Fenari, was that we did touch off of how the, how the tutorial is interpreted by the gamer, which is that, at the moment, you you go over and you activate a console or something or an, or the question mark, and you get a text where it was kind of said on and off that well, some gamers prefer it, a lot of gamers don't, or vice versa, where you have to read through the tutorial. But doing that about ten, fifteen times can get a bit of a, as an annoyance. Is that the data log prompts. The data log prompts, about. yeah. So a few, a few people, yeah. I'd I'd even gone and asked a few people, and they agreed, and they were kind of the mind where they said. Like I actually, one of them said to me, it was kind of like a little contrast to uh, to Gunsmith. I forget the the actress's name who did the voice, but they said, would it, would would they be up to putting a voice uh, a voice in telling you what to do as well as a support? Maybe pal, the pal voice can can um mm -hmm. can you know bring you through it because I think a lot of a lot of gamers like to hear the um what's the word. The, not the ambience, like voice but, prompts or the, yeah, something like, yeah, 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 the voice prompts. And yeah, the, that, the, that is definitely something that we're looking at doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, because it's kind of like a a poor balance of just like too much text, which isn't even that instructive. Yeah. Um. So even if we're gonna like really simplify it, like 
you come out of the crash site, the first thing it says is to equip the laser beam, but there's no instructions on how to open up your inventory or where the laser beam even is, really. It's not that clear. Yeah. So it's just like it's going to be going right down into the root of it and just very smallest step possible, step by step, all the way up to building your first kind of like factory system. Yeah. And then from there, it will be a little bit more freedom of play. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I uh, to to say something more general <clears throat> as well. Um we've got a lot of feedback of hey, we want to like we want more settings. Um so we're we're also we have it in our mind to uh like hey, maybe not have like be able to take hey, this isn't my first like factory sim or like hey, I've already played this game before and just have uh just do a lot more options. So probably not with M1, but like down the line we are th- we do have it in mind that um, we want to give players some more options, some more granularity of um, like change, change minor things such as a tutorial or like text or, or whatnot. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I, I can start asking questions too. Um, yeah. I guess also um, a big thing that I don't, I think we touched on a little bit on the focus group, and I don't remember if we touched on a lot last um, last video was um, the the map, and um, I think I got a question. I think just message of like, hey, are there any plans to like expand the map? And my answer to it was like, hey, before like we start looking at expanding the map, we want you to like feel like you want to explore um, the map a little bit more, and so especially with the new key. Uh, mm-hmm. like exploration is going to be a big thing. So yeah, Russell, I would love to hear some more details on on exploration because I actually, other than you're going to explore some more, I actually don't have any details myself as to what that will look like. If you can yeah. use anything else, um, I don't really want to reveal too much. I kind of mm-hmm. want to leave some of this stuff for, to come out. But of course, the main kind of thing with it is it's going to be a new kind of laboratory type area. I can say that much. Mm. And there's also going to be um some more things in between, I guess, Monolith 1 and that area. We're trying to make more space of, like, the huge map that we have, because honestly, there's, like, there's so much barren wasteland with nothing on it, and I'm trying to just expand the scope of, like, where we're building and doing stuff. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, yeah. Cool. Um, I do have one question, uh, in re- which is linked to both uh, the previous... Uh, conversation we had for now as well as the video that yourself and Rich did, um, Russell, uh, mm-hmm. it, wa- it was, I think it was mentioned that you have a name on the uh, the industrial lasers to either remove them completely or change them. Um, yeah. and, then, and then with that, uh, I, I take it back to the conversation we had on, on focus group, which was we did kind of have a solve for, for, the, for the need for them, which was that um, you could bring it. You could bring in the use of the the larger assets on the map, such as the big large scale towers or the large scale uh, yeah, yeah. St- steel beams. That it would give you a reason to uh, set up the lasers and not have to worry so much about running back and forward changing them. Because at the current in the current space, if you set up a laser, you're constantly running back and forward having to change its position because the scrap yeah I completely doesn't, agree doesn't last. Yeah. And like as much to say as we were we were we were gaining a like and i think we were gaining a hatred towards the lasers for that reason the fact that we had to keep mm-hmm. you know do, doing that but keep repositioning them and stuff yeah, yeah but given that given that we did put a solve and and kind of like a save on on uh, the use of them whereas they could be placed uh, in in one place aimed at something for a longer period of time um is that something that you would consider or you st- would you say that you're still steadfast and that they'll they'll be removed and the 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 uh, draw the the recycling droids will come in uh, instead. I or... think it's something we'd have to play test at first because mm-hmm. um, it does make more sense just to lock it on. But from like a balancing point of view perspective, I don't know how almost cheaty, quote unquote, it would be just to stick a laser beam down, point it at the thing, and you can just harvest unlimited. Well, no, no, no. That was that was something that I did. Uh, sorry for 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 disrupting you, but no, that was something that we That's did okay. say as well, which was that the assets themselves would eventually degrade and become destroyed after yeah, yeah, a period yeah. of time. It wouldn't be unlimited, like because even mm-hmm. we were saying, even we would know, like, yeah, that is cheaty as hell. Like, you know, you're just get granted yeah, unlimited yeah. scrap metal, <laughs> and then yeah. and then in turn, that's going to affect your usage of the the drones then in 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 tier two. Um, but I I was kind of looking at it from the stance of 
yes, they do degrade, but at the same time, currently you, you get very little use out of your belts. Like they would actually give you a use towards extending your belts large, larger distances as well, considering where you are. Um, and for that reason, you get to justify the usage of belts because currently uh, when you're building a factory, a lot of people do come uh, on this particular map. You're kind of constrained to build platforms in some cases. And because of that, you have to compact build your factories. Um, not that you have to, but a lot of people would considering what's mm -hmm. around them. Um, so that I was kind of trying backtracking, like trying to figure out, well, that's one, that's another reason, like in terms of balancing or the usage, like it, it kind of leads onto the usage of belts a bit more. Yeah. And I, amongst, amongst other things. Yeah, I, it is a good idea. I'm not going to lie. It is. Um, but it is just something we're gonna have to test because mm -hmm. we are kind of moving ahead with the core mm -hmm. resource farming aspect being the scrap yeah. mm -hmm. So And Wrench yeah. brings up a good point as well. Uh, it could be like not a right now item, but a later tier item like Monolith yeah. 3, 4, 5 have a laser that does it at those tiers as opposed to Monolith 1. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think also what's I'll I guess my my uh, purpose in this call is just to bring up more general stuff. Um, is I I think what's super exciting about Junk Punk is we still have Monolith three, four, and five to bring back or expand on a lot of different things. Um, so yeah, there there's still a lot of op like so for example in Gunsmith we view it as being like ninety five percent complete, right? Where like. Mm -hmm. In some metrics, like, Junk Punk uh, isn't even, like, halfway complete, right? Like, we still haven't done 3, yeah. 4, and 5. So, yeah, there, there's still a lot of stuff we can add and a lot of stuff we can come back to. We just need to push an update, like, pretty soon, though. Uh, that's the only thing. But after that, like, the sky's the limit, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Which is why we're trying to do the Monolith 1 and 2 rework. Because, you know, we were looking at continuing with Monolith 3, but there's so many resource based issues just like just that alone when you're in one lift two i don't know about you guys but whenever i was trying to farm for plastic scrap i would end up just oh filling my, my entire God. inventory with single <laughs> stacks of plastic and so i would only ever mine the plastic and i'd just leave the buckets and the motors and all the other stuff just to... that's what i did <laughs> yeah, yeah it's just it's stuff like that which needs a lot of thought and um change that that that's kind of what i'm trying to get done first before we can yeah bring out big new content i think we've got to really fix the smaller issues and stuff like you were saying with the scrap um laser machine mm -hmm. that is another thing it's just careful balancing to pave the way for more consistent content yeah mm -hmm. have a good foundation for stuff yeah or yeah. like pay uh pave the foundation a little bit more i guess yeah mm. yeah any other questions um, um well yeah oh, I, I was gonna say, since we're talking about the uh the scrap drones real quick um uh, uh umbrella do you want to show off the the picks or i can show off the uh the picks of the uh the scrap drones since um, we're talking about them either go on you show them off i'll, uh, I'll all I'll... right cool <laughs> oh, um well, you're pulling those up uh umbrella did you bring up the question that we talked about in that little session we had um what was the 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 bunker that I showed you and the question related to that. Do you want do you want to reiterate the question, Nick? Because I'm not gonna lie, I've I, I was taken down that much. It's 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 gone. Okay, I'll I'll ask <laughs> after then. So yeah. I am just pulling them up right now. Uh, can you all see what I'm sharing? We can't. All right, great. Yep. So. We got um we got four angles Ooh. of the uh, the sick new scrap drone. Here we are, oh, cool. and um, I'm trying to ask this codedly. Uh, give me one second. <laughs> I, I'm I'm just going to DM Russell this. Uh, give me one sec, guys, because <laughs> there is one other aspect I know of for the scrap drone, but I don't know if I'm allowed to say it. Um. <laughs> <clears throat> I keep seeing you want to type something, Wrench. What's up? Okay.
Okay, cool. Yeah, that, um, the scrap drone is going to come with like its own crafting station and deposit station in a similar way to the NWR drones. It's mm -hmm. basically just going to be like a lower tier version of it, which is going to be way easier to craft as well. Um, and just actually have some kind of automation within tier one, because like with the scrap machine um, laser at the moment, you just spend all your time maintaining it. And it's just like you were saying earlier, Umbrella, you just running around, rotating it, running back, get getting your resources in order. Then you've got to run back to it, destroy it, put it somewhere else. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's the the main thing with the scrap drone is to have that automation. Yeah. Um, um, just let it which, do its thing. Uh, in, in addition, seeing, seeing as we're talking about automation, uh, just before we go on to that bunker question, um, Phoenix, um, there was something else that we spotted before that, which was, or we discussed rather, um, which was, now I know you said that you're kind of taking back the bio, the bio key for mm -hmm. for, uh, um, for the for the, mm -hmm. the immediate future, I should say. Um, does that include... Before I can ask this question, let me ask you, does that include the, the farming aspect, as in the plant growing? Most likely, yeah. Most likely. Now. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, just in case there's something, you, you have a change of heart in some aspect of that, I'll say this. We did kind of, we did have the arc of, you, the guys had everything ready. Basically, they had uh, the pump the pump from water into a tank, which you could you could interconnect with pipes. But for some reason, we couldn't connect pipes to either the grower or the sprinkler system just to automate the water going into the yes. going. yeah that was something yeah. we had noticed and seeing as games like this kind of screen out automation you're kind of saying well that's a trap because we can't automate it no, now that not is, that it not yeah. not that it's a problem because you know there's not there's not enough i suppose work to do there to justify having to do that because you know you you, you do four or five uh grow cycles and that's it your plants are done for that key should it ever should it ever come along but um i suppose just you know as, as a future reference like if it's something that you want are you you're reworking to reuse there you have it, it, it the automation aspect is we, if we could mm -hmm. interconnect them it would be a blessing in disguise for us do you know what i mean yeah i do um plant stuff is definitely going to come down somewhere further in the line in terms of monoliths mm -hmm. um but i i completely agree with you it's just another one of the ways where this is an automation game without something you can even automate yeah so that's part of the reason why i'm thinking of just completely scrapping it as well because it also doesn't come across at all in the nwr tier in one lift two yeah it is just it serves its function and then it just takes up space and inventory slots and all of these resources that you never even look at again yeah so yeah. that's why i'm trying to replace it with something that is more consistent throughout the monolith tiers as well yeah so you're not just like i know in my game i had like chests and containers just completely full of stuff i was never even touching yeah, and that's yeah. something so i really want to like and buckets <laughs> yeah it's just yeah that, like... that's why we asked about a recycling thing yeah that is also something yeah. um that we're going to be doing it, i don't think it's a it's a short-term solution to what i think is a long-term problem but i think a recycling machine where you can just put something in it and you get back its core resources is definitely going to be helpful I th well, I mean, I I think uh, I think given it's a recycling and and given what the player is able to craft, I mean, you can craft steel scrap from basic scrap. I I don't I can't talk or, or or speak on behalf of everyone here, but I personally think that if it's a recycling machine, the core would just be ba a basic scrap for the objects that you're putting in it. Yeah, I I yeah. think people would to to give an opinion that I heard. I think people would be fine with like. All these junk buckets and pumps can, or I, I don't know, like uh, if we're still going to have them, but like junk stuff, they would be fine with just getting a singular scrap back or something. Like I don't think it's a super big balance issue. Just as a side tangent. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, that, that's useful to know. But I, I agree. It's just it's got to be something rather than nothing. Yeah, so, yeah, mm. for sure. Yeah. Um. Also, I think before we uh before we change topics, um. I was curious if uh, Russell, you can leak anything more of um, the differences between the uh, the scrap drone and the uh, NWR drone. Um, if you have any of that planned out or any anything you can hint at, other than the appearance, of course, and it being tier one. Um, I mean, it's gonna operate at a lower level. Mm -hmm. So when we get to the balancing, it's gonna be differences with probably inventory space, um, mining speed, uh, movement speed. <clears throat> just all of the things that the NWR drone does, it's just going to be 
I don't want to say worse at, but worse at. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, but, but also easier to craft. Much easier to craft. So mm -hmm. there's kind of a, yeah, a balance. Perfect. Uh, yeah, uh, just before we move on, one last question that Phoenix was hinting off there, which I've kind of remembered. We Well, we were doing a, a play test of our own. Uh, Phoenix, you, you're going to notice that there was a, a bunker door built into a, a cliffside that we noticed. It seems... So, yeah, go on, Phoenix. Actually, you say it. Yeah. Uh, I've been playing for over a year, almost since it since Junkbook released, actually. Uh, nice. And have 261 hours in the game. I've seen a lot of the map. I know a lot of the really a lot cool of junk fun. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh. I've seen a lot of the really cool and fun details that already exist in the game. Mm -hmm. Example for people who have not seen it before is that there is a bunker in the game. Yeah, there you is. You can't access it. You can't get into it. You go up to it, and it basically says your laser's not strong enough. But it's something that's already in the game. So my question with the upcoming Monolith One update. Are we going to see more places like that, or are we just going to continue to use the assets that are already in the game? There's going to be maybe gonna not be everyone has seen. There's going to be more. Yeah, there's going to be more. <laughs> um, I don't really want to go into it too much, but that bunker is going to like make more sense as the updates come out. Great. Quick question: um, Was that was that bun was that bunker door by any chance a nod to Fallout? Because it just it looks like a vault door. <laughs> it could be. I was just, off Richard on that one. It it just haunted I, I me when it. when Phoenix pointed it out to me. I was just looking at it, going, "That has to be a nod to Fallout. Come on, it has to be." <laughs> that, that's that's a question for Rich. I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I will say um, uh, how how can I hint at this? Um, we have asked Rich like, "Hey, is this a nod to something? Is this a nod to something?" Russell, do you know what I'm referencing? When we we saw something and we're like, "Hey, is, is this what this is referencing?" Yeah, I, I yeah, think I do. Okay, yeah. yeah. So there might be some nods to stuff, but uh, Rich definitely does. Rich and I think Ed would be the ones to confirm or deny mm. that. Um, oh but gosh. yeah, you you may you may be able to expect some some other nods and hints and allusions to other stuff as the uh, as the game development progresses. Um, but the act the other reason I wanted to interject as well. Um, since since we're talking about this, is there anything you can expand on more, or even reiterate? Um, if people haven't seen it in one video, you can say it here on any of the changes to the lore, um, or lore expansions, or anything you've been working on, Russell. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of that. Um, and it all kind of ties into the similar thing of like the reworking of monolith progression. Um, what I, I don't really want to reveal too much, and I'm not really sure how to talk about yeah. it without... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what I will say is that the goal with Monolith 1 that I want to kind of achieve is, like, learning about the world that was, in a kind of sense. Okay. So, yeah. the origin kind of stuff. Um, there's already a few, like, documents and logs about the old scientists. I kind of want to expand on that a little bit more. But also use level design to tell a little bit more of a story as well, which is something that is a bit lacking at the moment just having like rather than these like big spirals and like plastic like the large sculptures and stuff like that i want to have like real objects that kind of indicate that there were people here before and add a bit of mystery and like a little bit more of a graveyard kind of feel to the island oh russell can, can, can you tell me um because that's something i've completely forgot to ask you the logs from the scientists like when you go into that turbine bunker that was actually something that was killing me to ask is there any chance we will get audio recording logs or are we only going to get text or can you tell us? I really want to do that. I do really want to do that. Um, and, and the only reason I ask, uh, the only reason I ask is because we had that experience with um, Horizon Zero Dawn. You okay. get you, you get the audio diaries of the basically the past world and how yeah. it and how it died and, yeah. and what happened. But like I kind of like after reading the after reading all the flavor text and the logs, like I kind of said. Do you know something like the last moments like or you know audio logs would go so well given that you're like you're in underground and there's people working on this stuff yeah. do you know what i mean 100 percent. yeah I, I agree with you yeah. um that is more of a kind of, that's a different kind of issue i guess with the business side of the company is finding um voice, voice actors, actors and stuff like that um yeah. it's something that i really want to do because i think it would add a huge amount of flavor to the game mm -hmm. um 
but yeah, I'm going I'm I'm to be fighting Rich on that one because I definitely <laughs> want like more POW voice lines as well, just more interactions on POW. Say you're I walking volu- around the island and you find something and then he gives a little comment in your ear. Um, I volunteer. I'll do it for free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think also like uh, try, <laughs> trying to put it in the game as well. I Like I would imagine you can find voice actors pretty cheap, but also like putting yep. in dev time to to put the stuff in but mm. also actually no i take that back because like i i feel like you can't just record like just do a day in the studio and be like all right that's fine and then you implement it in the game like wait this doesn't work at all we've like modified five different things so for like a game as in flux right. as junk punk it might be a lot more complicated than just yeah. like okay yeah. we just got like three community members yeah. to shout out here's like a <laughs> steam gift card thanks very much and like now it just took us like an hour of work to do so yeah. yeah, but I would lo- like people would love to see voice lines for sure. Yeah, so uh, so would I. It's something that I really cool. want to put in. Um, it's just going to take a bit of proper planning to do. Yeah. Well, I I do want to bring this up as well since I had the thought. Do you think that with the changes you're coming up with the like more expanding the like what the facility is and everything else? Do you think that there will be a little bit of retconning to closely align to what it will become in the future? You mean retconning what already exists, or yes? Um, like I know that there's not much there now, but will there? Yeah. Be retcons? I'm cool. I'm really trying to work with the what we already have as a core. There shouldn't be too many retcons. It's just okay. Off the top of my head, there shouldn't be anything like too impactful that is gonna yeah retcon on the already existing law. Yeah, maybe maybe a couple of things here and there, but they shouldn't be, it shouldn't be groundbreaking. Okay. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. Yeah, uh, we, we can move on there for now. Yes, as you're yeah, sure. looking to. Do. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was just going. Um, I I had a question about art. I guess if you since uh, my mind was wandering while while we were talking, um, you mentioned that um. Like you want uh, for for level design, you wanted to like uh, make the larger objects more impactful and tell like a story. Um, if you want to expand on that a little bit more, or talk about like any um, aesthetic changes, anything. Um, let me see if I can hint at this. Um, anything we talked about the the monolith one aesthetics. Um, like uh like the weather for example or anything like that uh or anything else that that might be changing or you're looking into changing um or you can also say no comment that's fine as well if you're not <laughs> yeah. we're not good uh sharing it right now no i'm just i'm, I'm let me an think an unplanned a question i think y- yes and no but i don't really want to comment overly yeah <laughs> sure. There will definitely be changes in places, um, but for the most part, we are sticking with like the junk punk kind of ambiance. Okay, based of what of what we already have. Okay. So yeah. Cool, umbrella. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you had a uh, you had something after. Uh, I'll come back to it if I can. It's gone. <laughs> I'm just. So I was. It was born in my head, and then I was like, um. It's gone. <laughs> uh, no, I'll, if I remember, I'll come back to. Sorry. Yeah, no problem. Phoenix, you, uh, you, anyone... you, Phoenix, you had something else I think you wanted to say earlier. Did I? Uh, if I remember you touched off something. Oh no, that was the vault. Never mind. Yeah, if anyone in the chat <laughs> has anything, um, I think we talked a lot about the tutorial. We talked a lot about um, monolith, uh, monolith one and the keys. Oh, uh, I guess um. Is there going to be anything changing with the uh, with the tech key, um, Russell, or anything uh, you can talk about? By the way, the the tech key, yeah. There's a mm-hmm. couple of balance changes that I want to do to it. Um, nothing too major. It's for the most part going to stay how it is, but all of the new stuff is going to come with the new one lift one key that's going to replace the biological key. Mm-hmm. It's just going to be, yeah, just a bit of difference, to be honest. And something that fits more in line with kind of like the whole idea of cleaning the atmosphere as well, which is also why I, um, I'm I'm removing the biological stuff because it just doesn't narratively fit in yet to bring life back into the island. Mm. But that's something that will definitely be touched on in further monoliths. 
does that include the requirements for the the construction of that key like such as new resources or or new discoveries in order to create it or uh, yeah yeah it does yeah 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 um speaking of uh if the biological key was to make a return uh there was i phoenix i think you and i had this discussion as well we said that i think it was me who said i'd love to see we couldn't understand why you needed ingots to create a bio key so i was i i had notion that said i wouldn't even mind if if pal sent you like to either construct something where you had to research you know soil or dna and you had to mm -hmm. create like certain hybrids of the plants that are currently available or seeds that are currently available to you and from there you 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 know it's it becomes a bit of a grinder to to create the bio key and and justify justifiably so um and at least then that that kind of work would replace simple resources just being put into a machine and say hey there's a key yeah that's that is also part of the reason why i'm replacing it because mm -hmm. Like you say, it just doesn't really make that much sense. It's and when biological life kind of stuff will return further down the line in monolith progression, um, the resource requirements should make more sense for crafting it as well. Yeah. So yeah. Okay, then that answers that. That's fair. <laughs> I, I did also have a thought in relation to the keys. Uh, when you start up a game, you choose a difficulty, and ultimately, what the difficulty does right now is it changes the amount of stuff you put into the keys yeah so with this is something that we're going to be looking at um because part of the like monolith one rework update is changing the power system and player health system as well so we are tinkering with the idea of how we can merge different difficulty levels with the new player health system that, which that is basically going to it's going to be a combination but... of like player charge and player health and if you run out of charge you're going to die type thing but we're adding trying to think of more consequences and just expanding on the impact of power and health in the game rather than just walking into water and dying it's yeah yeah trying to just uh, just a bit more meaning so i i hope that kind of answers your question a little bit there with um well i i was more wondering like with the exploration key how will that be affected? Is there going to be more stuff you have to bring back? Is there going to be different stuff? Um, probably if we're sticking with like the consistent increased resource requirements, then probably more. Yeah. Okay. Um, more stuff to explore. Yeah. <laughs> um, what do I want to see? Um, uh, hey, I, I'm going second. to. What's up? Uh, Wrench has a question. He hasn't played in a hot minute, but does the player character arm still clip through the body? If so, is it going to be changed? Uh, the the player. So what what they're asking is the, uh apparently your player arm clips through your your character model or something. This may have already been yeah. changed, but I haven't seen that. I might be insane though. I haven't encountered that one either. Okay. Um. But I can definitely look at it. Yeah, okay. I've um, got like a list of all like the community feedback bugs and stuff that you've been reporting on me, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We we had some good meetings on that. Uh, player arm clipping in body, maybe. Uh, I just DM'd it to you just in case. Cool. Um, but yeah, well, we can take a look at it. Any um, yeah, I, I can I can comment on this. So on gunsmith there there's this three-way splitter machine and it's like an arrow that goes in and then like it's supposed to be three arrows that go out like this and then one of the arrows it's like uh left right and then it's like right right and then left right and so like stuff like that that's a super simple fix where um where you just need to like rotate the arrow twice and like as a dev that's like two minutes of work um so like any super simple stuff like that um is great feedback that can that can get bumped because even though it's not super impactful it's very easy to document and it's very easy to fix as well i think i was told the the three big things i i guess i'll i'll try to reiterate this as much as possible for the community the three biggest things we look at when um, when we're trying to implement feedback and what I do when I'm categorizing the feedback, that's one of my, the big parts of my jobs is, um, 
how much documentation there is. So if it's literally just a screenshot of something, even if it's uh, just one person um, showing it, like this is a very clear bug. Like we can just screenshot. It's like, oops, I just need to flip an arrow. No problem. Um, yeah. How, so like how, uh, documentation slash if you can recreate if it's like a once in a million bug like oops c uh, can't do anything about it uh number two how um how many people are reporting it so again like if if it's very easy to document and like ev like everyone would report it if they saw it like that's fine but if like 10 people have reported it um then we're much more likely to take a look at it than if it's like a one or one off thing with like a thumbs up or something and then number three how easy it is it is to fix so if you say like um oh you know i would like uh i would like to turn junk punk into an mmorpg like and 10 people <laughs> say it and like it's easy to document like we'll be like all right good for you you can make junk punk too bro like that's not gonna uh that's not gonna uh happen <laughs> yeah um but yeah yeah um so, so uh i wanted to change topics for something else if anyone had anything uh else before that um i can let them go by the way nope i'm good all right cool um i something i was very happy about hearing in the in the last video russell is you touched on um potential player modifications and yeah. i can say you haven't promised this to everyone watching you haven't promised this i'm just saying this is something uh we've discussed um we discussed in the focus group and i let russell know this is in like factorio for example um all the different machines have like a, like a tier one machine will have like one square a tier two machine will have two squares a tier three three etc um that you can put like modifications to make it like um like go faster be like more power g efficient or something uh power efficient or something like that um and then also for like body modifications maybe like modifying the laser have that same square thing that where lasers like uh ignore types of scrap or um um uh, like or like go farther more efficient uh whatnot or like have different upgrades for like your jetpack or whatnot um mm -hmm. so I yeah like scrap yeah exactly yeah. and so at first i was very happy that a feedback that we hadn't considered that much um got talked about so quickly um so i was very happy about that and also i was wondering if um there was anything you could expand on any potential ideas you may have that aren't like aren't set in stone but like different thoughts you had or anything like that but yeah i think yeah from my memory it was just like it was brushed on and then we didn't really like expand on it at all yeah so in the upcoming update there is going to be changes to the upgrade station the player Ooh, upgrade station. okay based um, but it's not going to be entirely what i want to fully do to it just yet um my kind of like uh dream is to have a cyberpunk style kind of body modification type thing where you can add you can craft these different attachments you can put them on your body you can see the leaf bot change in real time um and just modify all your different stats and you can do this similar kind of thing with the drones and the machines just like what you were saying but that is something that's going to come along later because um i've spoken with rich about this and he is 100 percent on board with me it's just for you know behind the scenes reasons this is gonna it will come in it's just gonna happen a bit further down the road it's so, yeah. also a dream and not a guarantee. No, I, I would say it is a guarantee. It's just a so, further okay. down the road guarantee. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. You're just talking about awesome. it. It's, a, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a case of time, really. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, also, just as a side note, that my brain just uh, went into its mind palace real quick. Um, <laughs> I don't think we talked about this in the focus group, guys, um, but correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I've seen at least two people give the feedback, and I think more, that especially when you're doing tier one stuff, it's really annoying to have to switch to between the uh, the backpack and the jetpack yeah. uh, because of inventory. Okay, great. Yeah, so yeah. just that letting you know, and if you want to comment changed, on that. Yeah. Okay, base, great. Which is a part of kind of like, there's, um like I was saying with the upgrade station type of stuff, there's going to be two stages to it, which is the, longer term one which is going to be like a kind of cyberpunk style thing and the shorter term one is just going to be small changes like that but 
there are like the combined small changes, even just having text box descriptions on the upgrade station. Because I don't know about you guys, but when I first played the game, I had no fucking clue what anything did on those boxes. <laughs> it was just like, okay, this is laser free. I don't know what the difference is, but here we go. Um, and this also is going to play into the player power system as well, because once you get, I think it's the chest core, once you've got like <clears throat> the second or third level player power, just is just completely redundant. Yeah. So Yeah, and just yeah. to point it out, Dixie's our youngest quote-unquote player. Yeah, I just started playing in February. That? So did I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you experience that, Dixie? Uh, I I went ahead once I got to level two. I just completely upgraded everything. I took the extra yeah. time. I shut down my production and upgraded my equipment. I mean, my backpack you... was so small. My jetpack was just so slow. I just shut everything down, and that's what I focused on: getting all the parts that I needed to upgrade my body parts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Strangers> <laughs> <up my town. laughs> yeah. It's a uh, kind of a similar thing to what I did as well in my gameplay. But just like you were saying, Kevin, I don't think you should be forced to choose between <clears throat> having basically no inventory size and having no mobility. It's yeah, yeah. There is one thing actually I'd love to uh, ask you about, Russ, or bring 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 to you, uh, which is actually the crafting um, mechanics slash menu. Um, mm -hmm. In in a lot of a lot of games where you can handcraft, uh, provided you have the prerequisite materials, it will craft the necessary prerequisites prerequisite words requisites to, requisites to to get what you need. Whereas junk punk currently doesn't do that. For example, let's just say you have 150 basic scrap and you want a, a processor, you can't just mm -hmm. click on the processor. You have to go and create each individual part to create a processor. Is that yeah. a pos is that a possibility for an implementation where, if you have the necessary base core material, it you can just hit create just processor craft, yeah. and and it will auto craft everything up until the item that you need? Or yeah. is is this is this uh, is this just a product that we're going to have to get use of and that's the way it is? Or no, that that is also something I would like to have a look at. Oh, sorry, Phoenix, what are you saying? Mm -hmm. I will put it out there. Uh... A lot of games do it, not all games do it, but yeah, yeah, the yeah. games that don't very heavily focus on you're not handcrafting as much because the machines make things so much yeah. better, so much faster, so much et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that, that is something that we're going to have a look at um, because even like you were saying with the build mode, just the entire UI is going to get a full rework. Richard is going to be the one who's spearheading that. He is oh, okay. very much going to be giving it a big overhaul and that will probably come in with some new changes to crafting and um stuff like that as well so yeah cool. um, and icons like item icons stuff like that everything's going to be just clearer and mm -hmm. beginner a, a bit more beginner friendly as well highlighting the k button yeah <laughs> <laughs> Was it me who sent you a DM that was like, K button, it's useful. Bro, I swear to God, you, I've seen the two biggest pieces of feedback I've seen are like a million questions on what the hell drones do. There's a drone bug, the drones don't do this, the drones don't do that. Wait, the drones can actually do that? No, the drones can't do that. And, um, oh yeah, I forgot about the K button, just press the K button, bro. Wait, K button? Oh, dude, <laughs> wait, I could have just pressed the K button this whole time. Yeah, so like those yeah, two things Yeah, I didn't even know it like, existed. I... I played like 45 hours all the way through and i never even knew the k-bun existed yeah. in the first yeah. place so i uh, oh, i had yeah. i had that i had that discussion with you kevin as well which was where i thought that the feckin drones were bugging out but then i realized oh no i just don't have enough power going to the goddamn platform because when the winds when the wind slows down so does the power so mm -hmm. even though even though it was powered up and they were doing their jobs properly the wind would die down and it would become unpowered and they were like doing nothing i was saying but everything's fine what's what's going on and then i was like yeah. Oh God, they're not. It's not enough wind. Yeah. Yep. Um. Oh, I just realized there's a chat that I have access to. Okay. Cool. Uh, wrench. I'm going to uh look at your messages in just one second. Um. I I also wanted to say, Umbrella. I did share this feedback. So again, <laughs> this may or may not be implemented, but um, I said like a good a good band aid fix for that is, um, like drones like. If you're just out in the world, you're not like always looking at your um 
uh, your, like, conveyor belts, right? But you're mm-hmm. seeing, like, drones fly, like, to and from platforms and stuff. Like, they're very visible, and they they traverse a long distance. Mm-hmm. So if there's something wrong with a drone, even if it's for, like, three seconds, it um, it feels really bad to players, and, like, you can immediately see it, where, like, if a conveyor belt messes up for, like, three seconds every five minutes, like, a player isn't going to notice that almost ever. So I I gave the feedback of maybe have power prioritize uh, drone platforms first, so there's less likelihood um, of like drones appearing to bug out for for whatever reason. So we we are aware of like we are aware of drones doing weird stuff sometimes, and there's a lot of potential solutions uh i'm just not aware of what what is and isn't going to be implemented and what isn't isn't going to happen in m1 and russell if you want to expand on that more i don't know um if you can spoil anything more on that but yeah just letting you guys know that we have heard your feedback for sure with like the drone pathing and stuff like that Mm. drone pathing or power or anything like that yeah yeah it is um they're going to follow a similar model to the nwr drones but the things like you were just saying, we are going to be looking at fixing for both drones. So hopefully the scrap drone won't actually come with these problems because we're going to aim to fix them for the NWR drones. I, I feel so bad for Ed because he's been dealing with the drone pathing problems for <laughs> yeah. so long. He, he's he got his plate full. <laughs> yeah. Um. But no, I was going to comment if... Uh, the drones are continually working it's going to be a le- immediately more obvious when you have more problems because of power mm-hmm. because you're going to run through and be like why aren't my machines working and see that the machines are off yeah <laughs> even um, though the drones are continually going it's just going to be a constant influx it, which also kind of plays into the um the full kind of like when i say play health power i also refer to like machine power and stuff like that as well mm-hmm. which is yeah. okay cool Ooh, yeah that could be interesting a different power generation amount from your machines different difficulties yeah yeah and like um once again it's going to come further down the line but when we eventually get to the modification stuff that will also allow for much more fine tuning of power management along with I- like items and player stuff as well. So that's what I mean when I say like paving the way. We're kind of yeah. cleaning up Monolith One in order to clear the road for better I... content and more content. I'm pretty sure I've said this among the focus group. It sounds like you guys are trying to build your foundation, which is a very, very important part of any game and its cycle is if the foundation of the first few hours of a game, if all this other stuff is cracked or bad or have problems or all this other stuff, you're not going to get someone to play for 200 hours. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, you know, with like with respect to Richard, he, the, the company was in like a different place and they had a much smaller team and things were far more hectic back then from what I've said, um, what, what I've heard from him. Um, but clearing up the foundation is completely the goal of what I'm trying to do in both the Molith 1 and 2 rework, which will follow at some point yeah. in the future as well. Um, uh, Wrench Jockey also pointed out that there could be a, um, uh, what do I want to say, like a, a power split option to like prioritize or say like maximum output on like this side of the machines, like 50 kilowatts or something. But yeah, again, like we, we have, um, uh, the the feedback the the feedback section in the Jira like I've put a bunch of like di- different possible uh different possible solutions easy solutions stuff like that so yeah uh, um and then we also have a bunch of game designers working on it as well so yeah I think um especially for this a a big uh focus will be like what's the easiest to implement and especially if it's going to be a a temporary solution it's probably going to be like the easiest to implement and then like in a monolith or two we're gonna uh, like hey now we like completely fix drones we took like a bigger uh chunk of time so yeah um yeah like uh all of these things that we're discussing here um you know i asked are things that will come in eventually um we have a pretty solid idea for what we're doing with monolith one but the things we miss out on 
will be getting cleaned up in the Monolith 2 patch as well. Like, Because you're also going to be looking at Monolith 2 rework, huh? Yeah, yeah, because there are there's Monolith 2 has got its own issues, Monolith 1 has got its own issues. Um, and by the time the Monolith 2 update is done, like I like, I really want to emphasize that we are trying to build on that foundation, like you were just saying, Phoenix. Like, yeah, making sure everything is as smooth as possible before we move on to Monolith 3. Because if we were to have gone ahead with the Monolith 3 update, it just would have added a whole new tier of mess without addressing any of the previous issues that we have. So, so, yeah. So just to re-emphasize, you are gonna do the Monolith 1 update that is coming undefined date hopefully sometime <laughs> soon uh yeah. and then a monolith 2 update and then yeah. look at the monolith 3 and 4 that yeah. has been teased in the past and potentially yeah. changed but um the content that's been teased is gonna it's staying in the game whether it comes out in monolith 3 or not is gonna be you know that's a problem from when monolith 3 comes around exactly um, <laughs> but no, I I definitely want to keep a lot of the stuff that's been teased in Monolith Three. It's just Monolith Three is really not the focus point at, at the moment, which is which is kind of I guess going to upset a lot of people. But you know, you guys have got to understand that we really do need to clear up what we already have before we yeah yeah mm -hmm. progress in Monolith Three. Yeah, I I think also to expand on that, like if we rush into Monolith Three, like we're never getting Monolith Four because it's good. We've just added another foundation. So yeah, if you if you're getting frustrated at a uh, Monolith One and Monolith Two having to be reworked and polished up a lot, um, if we add Monolith Three, that that can significantly significantly increase the time for mm -hmm. the rest of the Monoliths as well. So yeah. We we asked for just a little bit more goodwill, guys, and we're gonna we're gonna have some sick <laughs> stuff that um, I and Russell are privileged to that we can't share right now. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I I will also say in regards to what Wrench just said, the last update from the devs was ten days ago. And people on the Steam community are still asking for an update in the discussions. Yeah, they I should probably check out the news feed. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. I um I I I mentioned this. Um, we, um, how, um, we're trying to build a system to where, um, where the devs can intermittently, like, say, say hi and like, hey, like, we've seen it because right now, like, the main job of people saying, like, hi, yeah, we've seen this is me. Um, and, uh, oh, I'm not allowed to say that. Uh, how can I hint at this as well? Um, just imagine Richard like watching the stream. Yeah, just imagine. Um, <laughs> there will be future discussions. I think I can say there will be future discussions of um, um, of having other people do stuff similar to mine that's about all i can uh, other jobs similar to mine so such as like devs replying to stuff mm -hmm. um that's pretty much all i can say on that but yeah we um we we've heard this and right now i can promise you it doesn't look like it to the community i can promise you like i am sharing the feedback and the devs are seeing it the step that's missing right now that we need to fix is the devs then saying, "Oh yeah, we've seen that. Like, yeah, uh, Kevin sent that to us. Great. Um, that's the main. That's the step that y'all don't see that feels bad. But I promise you, we are seeing the feedback. It's just yeah. we're not responding to it other than me. Um, yeah. So yeah, we're, we're, we're kind of at an awkward point. Okay, we're I, kind of at an awkward point where there's um a lot going on within the company, but also a lot that we can't talk about so it looks like nothing's happening but there is actually a, a lot going on yeah mm. I, I will also say that as kevin is the official hired by set person that is that in between between the community and the devs mm -hmm. if kevin is saying the devs are seeing this the community needs to recognize that the devs are seeing this and they are recognizing this feedback Mm -hmm. Yeah, the devs themselves do not always have to get on Discord to respond. They don't have to get onto Steam community and respond. Kevin yeah. is our official person. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I will say also, um, I never never ping the devs um 
no, just don't just don't <laughs> ping the devs. But y'all are like, welcome to spam ping me about anything. If you need like even if like most people would see this as like, yeah, this has been answered like three times already, it might annoy me or something. But it is my job to answer messages. That is fifty per or, more so now, but uh, that is at least 50% of my job is community management. So yeah, if if there's ever a doubt like, hey, I don't think devs have seen this, y'all are welcome to spam ping me at any point, um, and I will see it. And I, do, I at least, if there's not a long conversation going on, I see 100% of the messages um that that are here the only thing i have muted is the uh the welcomes like that's a um <laughs> hey welcome uh, uh abc uh thanks for joining that's the only thing i don't see but i see a hundred percent even like um do we have localization in junk punk yeah we do even the localization uh, i should probably mute it i don't speak russian but um yeah like i see all the messages so if you want a more concrete response or if something isn't satisfying you for whatever reason anyone is welcome to spam ping me anyone is welcome to dm me as well and on the on the flip side of that i'm more than happy to tell people to fuck off if i feel like it's too much i'm very happy to say like hey i've responded to this it's fine don't like it is on me to tell you to stop to uh stop communicating um and stop annoying me with questions it is not on you to not annoy me with questions um hopefully that that's satisfying for now and we can get a more satisfying solution in the future but yeah i just want to um kind of say quickly um there's been a lot of such i have seen this a lot in the steam communities about people asking just for smaller patches and smaller updates mm -hmm. um we are working towards a pretty big launch for this Monolith 1 rework, but the space in between the Monolith 1 rework and the big Monolith 2 rework update is going to be, hopefully, filled with a bunch of smaller updates and patches for stuff that we haven't, we've missed or we haven't touched up on. So, yeah, I, ju I just want to kind of say that we have heard you there. Um, mm -hmm. If you hold on a little bit longer, I'm sure the wait will be worth it for the big Monolith 1 rework. And then in between that, we're going to be trying to like you know communicate with the community a bit more and hashing out these smaller updates and stuff like that i'd say even reiterate that in in uh in your and, and richard's next uh up youtube update video um do yeah do yeah, announce yeah do announce it and and forcibly announce it to to the viewers like that we've heard you on the the minor patches we are we are doing that and even more so to to put everyone at ease, put a pinned post, if not already, put a pinned post leading to that YouTube video on Steam and say news regarding updates here. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think I think a lot of people do hide themselves too much in the forums on Steam, uh, which, you know, again, it's all written and it's very like developers and PR guys and and gamers alike it's extraordinarily hard to live in in keyboard world writing writing updates and constantly and hoping people read that without complaining whereas it's a lot easier to quite literally blast a link to a youtube video where if anybody says anything you're able to say we quite literally said it in this video what we are doing mm -hmm. that we that we did hear you regarding the updates and this is not a copy and paste text that was saying we heard you on the updates like it's there's an old saying like not it's not that it's an old saying but there's one where i believe it's extraordinarily hard for people to understand how you feel reading a pixelated text more so than hearing you speak or seeing you talk yeah if you know what i mean yeah. so like for me yeah. that for me like my go-to is the update videos that richard and, and and the team put out like that that for me is all i need that's the news i need because i can hear the sincerity in his vo i can hear the sincerity in his voice when he's talking and he's he's going through the he's going through the motions of everything that's been said and what's been taken on and what he proposes to do and what they hope to do and again if 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 the complaints or the or the wants are read by the developers and they're able to put that into an update video where we specifically seen this comment or we specifically seen that or even you know do 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 a name drop of one or two of the commenters like who who had this this opinion just to kind of yeah. put them in the spotlight a bit to say we yes we did listen to you we're not just nitpicking at the comments you know hopefully then in my, in my eyes i think that would kind of really 
push back and make the complaining side back off more so than the curiosity and allow, and allow the curiosity side to come in to say, oh, I wonder what patch update they'll do more so more so than them saying, oh, Jesse, I wish they just fucking do a patch update like this. This long waiting of, of big updates is killing. Yeah. Do you know, yeah. like, again, yeah. try, try, try and gain curiosity more so than than tenacity in, in that case, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad you've told me that like here and now that is, you know, I, I am taking that on board with everything you just said there. Um, And the next talk i have with rich i will i'll do exactly that i will yeah. call people out for who have made the suggestions for stuff and i'll ad actually address things yeah that's a that's a good idea and that's the kind of thing that like you know we're going to try and do more of right um kevin is like these kind of community reach outs and discussions yeah, and stuff like absolutely. that. absolutely i just think um just got to... myself a name drop oh sorry did i say that out Amrel, you're consolidating so much power. Dude. It's amazing. Yeah. It's incredible. Well, the great thing about the way that the Discord is set up, go to the suggestions forum and we can see all the different people that have mm. made the post, who have made the ideas, yeah. who have done stuff like that. Mm. Yeah. Oh, as a as a side note, by the way, guys, um, the priority I read is support and feedback is the first thing I go to. Um, so just as a slight preference, uh, support and feedback is uh, my preference to read stuff. Uh, just letting everyone know that. On Discord, yeah. is it? Yeah, on, on Discord. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So like, if you look at the channels, it's the one right under uh, discussion. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but uh, and that 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 for me is the closest thing other than YouTube because. I find that Discord is, is more of a, a live talk than it is like the Steam forum. Like Steam is more of a forum yeah. to me, whereas Discord is, yeah. it's pretty much, yeah, look, you can clearly see who's online and we're all chatting. They can see that we just posted this or they can see that we just quite literally are talking about this right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I will say, th this is also, I, I love intersectionality. This is intersecting my role as marketing community management and also a specific piece of feedback that um i think i can say this that i, I hammered a lot into uh into russell that y'all hammered into me and i completely forgot about which is um to make things feel more satisfying so specific we were talking about like building and being able to like snap things like just exactly into place <clears throat> and stuff like that and just to keep in mind like make make things feel more satisfying just in general in the game um and so yeah i think um a big part of my role also is like if everyone just had unlimited time and just looked at a hundred percent of the posts we put out like it, i i would say like okay there's no reason there's no need for like the devs to to message and whatever but yeah like i yeah. think that is a big part of my job to a remember people want to be satisfied as much as possible b i need to be more publicly facing uh in like i i should continue to find ways to make myself more and more uh publicly facing this is why one of the reasons i'm doing this these calls and mm -hmm. then three also for marketing um figure out like what what to prioritize to make sure there's always still like a hey by there's always still a funnel of like hey by the way in case you do have feedback like these are the venues and like have that in a majority or most of our stuff or maybe pin that or something um, so yeah, like I will still take a little bit of the fault of like, if you, if you don't feel like the devs are listening to you, that is partly my fault of not communicating, um, as efficiently as possible that you shouldn't have to click through more than like one or two things to find an easy way to access the, the devs. Like our discord isn't being spammed with messages. Uh, we, it shouldn't be hard to get in contact with us and it shouldn't, yeah. it shouldn't ever feel that we're not communicating with y'all. Yeah. And, and that's one thing that I keep bringing up whenever someone either in discord or who is new to discord and comes in and says, Oh, dead game, dead game. You can look in discussion. Uh, I'm curious right now and see that for Nari, was posting today but yeah you can also see that if you even scroll up just a little bit rich last posted a message in the middle of may sorry march his was, that that was his reply message wasn't it to his, yeah yeah i think yeah. like also ed was so, like, ed was in there and stuff but yeah yeah again like yeah. it's just if 
I understand the feelings for sure. Um, and like, if you look at it, if you're a player that just looks at the updates, yeah, like dead game. Um, so again, it's just a difficulty of, um, making players do as little work as possible to see, like, we're, we're still working on the game yeah. mm -hmm. and we, we care. Um, yeah, we, we are an indie studio. Like we, we like games. We're not, we're not yeah. trying to, trying to triple a, uh, 50 DLC, um, yeah. Uh, micro transact. Oh, oh shit! I have an awesome story for you guys. All right, dude. Like, screw it. If I get in trouble with Rich, fuck it, dude. This makes Rich look good. I th when he he originally um hired me to do marketing, and I kind of like took over community management as well in the middle. Um, and one of the first things he said was like, "Hey, listen, like, we're happy to have you on. Great, uh, whatever." And he said like. Just my only rule is just make sure whatever you're doing, it's ethical, it's moral. Don't do like, don't like clickbait people. Don't, um, don't like try to misdirect people. Just as long as it's ethical, like we're willing to try it or whatever. Like Rich has, Rich and we have like, um, a, a big part of your interests at heart. And yeah, we, we do try to communicate. Um, we, we do try to communicate as best as possible. But yeah, that, that's the yes. tangent on that. Mm, yeah. I, and that's what I was leading into was the devs are active on Discord. Mm -hmm. The devs have been active on Discord since I came into this. <laughs> like <laughs> one of the first posts that I had, I was responded to by Rich. Mm. And it's like, it is mind boggling to think about that with a lot of the devs that are out there, <laughs> even the indie devs. They don't communicate. They don't talk. They don't do things like that. They have their official posts. They have their official things, et cetera, et cetera. But if you were to just jump into a Discord call, you're probably not going to find Demir, who is an active dev on the <laughs> Discord and everything else, sitting in a voice call being like, oh, yeah, I'll absolutely leak this and leak that and talk about <laughs> this and talk about my thing like that. Where the hell is and Demir? Is He's coding right now. Is. <laughs> yeah. You you won't find that in a lot of yeah. other games and it's yeah. just something that I really enjoy about this game. Yeah. I t I think that's a that's an extension as well of like what's what's happened with previous titles not by not by, you know, Seacorp or other other developers um where the where the gamers and the fans get really into it and they really have high hopes and it's you know it, it it's one of those things that could be amazing and um, you know, the last message from the devs is, oh, we have a patch with, with big update coming soon. And then as soon as that little patch comes out, they declare a, a finished game and they run. It's gone. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Where, so yeah. I, I think for, ga for gamers, a lot, a lot who have experienced that in the past and then when they find the next good title, such as Junk Punk, they, I think there is a little bit of panic inset as well because they're really hoping that it doesn't go dead. And that's why they yeah. kind of have a tendency to hassle a bit as well. It's more so panic hassling than it is irritants. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and Rich um, does like care a lot about these two games. He really does. Oh, you can why. tell. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You can um, tell. I I did want to swing it back to one more uh, junk punk specific thing, and then we can uh, we can go into whatever until we're we're done with the call. Um. I was curious since we did talk um a decent chunk about this in this call if uh Russell you could expand on literally anything Monolith 2 any problems you see with Monolith 2 any things you even have bustling in your head like just expand on uh, uh, anything Monolith 2 for people who are curious Yeah the the main thing is making sure like you're making use of all the resources that's like I, wording it like that maybe might be a bit like do you guys understand what i mean by that when i say that like what you're not think... just abandoning um yeah. like the yeah. stuff you're doing yeah yeah yeah, yeah you it's told like, me about this before yeah. you i, I <laughs> think the most immediate example is plastic and electronics mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, electronics you, you just don't even touch it um well same thing goes do, with rubber if as well, you want to be sure. efficient <laughs> <laughs> the electronic yeah, stuff rubber, you just need a cable. yes uh it's one of the best ways to get gold and oh right right yeah, okay sure 
I'm just, I'm thinking from a perspective of like the majority of Monolith Two is like plastic yeah, and it, rare metals. It is designed around yeah using which the is, drones, which is, using things exactly as it that, is. That's kind of what I want to kind of get around is like making sure that you are making use of everything. Like rubber is another thing which just yep, it's like hardly even touched. So shout out to yeah. Phoenix for showing us the big tire, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know if I tweeted that out yet, but uh it's either scheduled or has already been tweeted out that um you uh that there's big tires in the game that was that was a fun thing. I uh, yeah. But it's oh. What was I going to say? <laughs> but yeah, th this is why I'm doing the the monolith oh. one stuff first so that mm. you know we get it completely cleared up hopefully it might indirectly also solve a lot of the issues that are going on with um, monolith 2 as well um i could i could oh. pull up my notes real quick yeah, yeah something monolith i 2. don't mind bringing up because it's something that most everyone here has realized at least i hope with demir you don't have to build a single crafting machine in monolith 2 because it is exactly as efficient yeah. Yeah. to build yeah. everything. That, uh, that, you just reminded me as well, Phoenix, that was another thing that we kind of touched off of, uh, on, on, our, on that last focus group call, which was it seems that the, the, just, the justifiable grind of the Tier 1 wasn't happening strictly because the player can craft anything by hand anyway just as fast. Um, in Monolith 2. Yeah, in Monolith yeah. 1, there is a difference. There is a Monolith difference, yeah. Specifically, it is exactly as efficient. Yeah, the, like, um, like the gears off the top of my head is one of them. Um, mm -hmm. It's just, it, it's one-to-one. -one, so that is definitely yeah. something that needs to be looked at. But that is a very careful thing that we need to go into and but balance. But that's, again, that's something in Monolith 2. Yeah, yeah. Y'all are working on um, Monolith 1. Like, yeah. but, like, oh, I mean, it's just that Kevin asked me about Monolith 2, or someone asked me about Monolith 2. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was asking about Monolith 2, yeah. Um, quick question, right? Uh, and it just it just hit me because you you mentioned gears there, but you're bring you're bringing on a new machine. Uh, I presume that's the recycler. Um, recycler, yeah, or some sort of recycling machine, yeah. Is is there is there anything in the works for bringing on a batch of machines to, which would be a requirement for you for your for your automation or or for your for your progress even on to, even on Monolith One or Tier One, for example. As you just stated there, yeah, the gear, gears is going to have to be a careful thing that we consider. And then it's just to hit me, well, it doesn't seem fair that we're able to craft that. So why not like a, a press that, you know, you put steel scrap into to produce gear, specifically a gear press machine, you know, stuff like, for, like the, for NWR. Uh, tier one. For tier one. It, um, he's seeing uh, more variety of crafting machines. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, tier one, a, a tier one gear press probably could progress into NWR in some way or form. But again, you know, you said oh, okay. that. You, I, see, you, I see what you mean. Yeah. See, again, like you said, you're 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 taking it back to you're taking it back to Monolith One, which is going to set precedence for for Monolith mm -hmm. Two onwards. You know, so. Yeah. Like uh, and and again, this this I think that was just one of the huge points for me as well, Kevin. Which was like I I felt that there was not enough of a grind there for the for the, the tier one automation slash factory. It was just you can quite simply make a couple of machines, you can produce everything, and then you're done. You're straight off. You're straight off then to, to mm -hmm. Monolith mono two. Whereas um, if there's anything that like Satisfactory, Factorio, and a couple of the others have taught us that you know there really is. A requirement for the building it doesn't matter if you're going to move on to next level technology but there really is a requirement for you to build a scrap a scrap level factory type thing to produce these things in order to get you to progress to monolith 2 and you know in some ways doing that much of a grind is meant to be it's meant to piss you off in such a way that you're kind of, like once you're done you get the sense of accomplishment then you move on to Monolith 2, and guess what? Now you get to start all over again. You're sure you have a high, high mm -hmm. tier of tech, but now you get to start all over again, uh, just on a higher level. But I get to look back and not have to, you know, destroy that scrap factory, like because it, you know, that much of a grind yeah, was there. In satisfactory, you can just 
upgrade everything. You build one building, and then you, the resources will upgrade the same yeah. object. Yeah. You know, it's just, um, I, I just, I don't know, it's kind of like, I, I, wasteful doesn't justify what I want to say. I, I think it's kind of like, <laughs> it's just such a crying shame. It seems like you're, you're, yeah. you because you're, you're, there is people, like, I mean, I showed you my picture, Kevin, as well, whereas, like, I had, like, all these splitters splitting off everything to shredders, which in turn were going into uh, crafters, which in turn were going into crates. And like that for yeah, me, other that... than the crates, everything pretty much should be deleted if you're playing it optimally. Yeah, I understand. You know, yeah. and, and for me, that kind of felt like a crying shame. It was like saying yeah. it was kind of like a, for me, that was a bit of art. The grind was the art of it, like that I was doing. And there just seems to me then that I wound up saying, do you know what? That didn't take, or, or that that took a lot longer than it actually should have took. But that was a bad thing because I wanted to separate everything, whereas you're able to get everything done under two or three machines. If you know what I mean, there's no, there's yeah. no, there's no uh, justifiable exactly. grind there. You know what I mean? Uh, you want to pull up that save that we were in? Yeah, actually, uh, we can actually show. Um. Just real quick, I should have probably messaged this to y'all. Uh, I have a meeting in 30, and completely unrelated meeting uh, that has nothing yeah. to do with SCT, uh, in 30 minutes. Um, so I have one other topic after this, and then we can, uh, if we want to continue the tradition of ending with a hot take, uh, we can do that as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, y'all are welcome to continue afterward, but I, I'm just going to be heading out probably in like uh, 15 minutes yeah, yeah. or so. Yeah, I, I'll probably be doing the same, to be honest. Okay. Just a second, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna just do up the multiplayer if you want to get in as well, Phoenix. Actually, on it. Yeah. Um. While well, y'all are doing that, um, I was. We can show what Umbrella's talking about. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, I was wondering, Russell, is there anything on player construction we're we're touching in the next patch, or is that going to be a little bit further down the line? Uh, you mean like base building? Yeah, base. But yeah, exactly. Um, we did look at it, it's something that, um, like I spoke about this quite a lot with Rich and we kind of came to the conclusion that it's for the most part going to be like, like you said, like snapping underneath stuff like mm -hmm. that. You have been religiously telling me that one. <laughs> yes. Um, there's going to be small fixes, but not overall like massive changes because okay. I was, I was playing with the idea of just, of adding some consequence based stuff around the base building but um i we, we, the plan is just kind of for the most part leave it as it is for the players who like build, base building can base build and the players who don't like base building they don't have to touch it if they don't want it so right you, that's you, that's yeah. kind of the route we're going to go for you should be able to get in there phoenix by the way reminds me yeah i see it it reminds me of a update that satisfactory did a hot minute ago where previously all of their base building was you know it was nice you could do some really cool things but then they did a big this is like rebar triangles special windows it was a big update that didn't really affect the gameplay that much but it was mm -hmm. so appeasing to all the people all people out there that love the base building also, yeah. uh, Umbrella, real quick, uh, can you look around and see if you're, like, uh, zoom into first person and out and see if your arm is clipping in, by the way, since we're all looking at this? That's a good point. Of since wrench, uh... Is that... Yeah, I guess that is kind of clipping in. When it's, um, in the idle animation, it's kind of clipping into your legs. I played most of my game in first person. Interesting. <laughs> Wait, no, I think I did the same. Did I do? No, I didn't. No, I play in third person actually. Yeah. But no, what what Umbrella was talking about is these three machines are what we use to make all of the bars. Mm -hmm. Right. And all I have to do is add an assembler, and that's it. We can get all the way through Monolith One. Whereas I'm the kind of person who, as as again, as I've shown you the previous picture, uh, Kevin. Uh, let me just get over to it. 
I'm usually that kind of person as well, I will say. Yeah. But again, uh, 260 hours has taught me the way that I showed. Like, I'm, I'm the kind of person who does this, you know, creates compact, multiple rows of stuff. Yeah. You know? Mine was just a complete fucking mess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just created what was absolutely hey, necessary hey, you... went with it. Yeah. And that's that, that's, that's what I was talking about, Russell. Like as well, there, like the 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 vat, the the vats and the pump. But there's no way to connect it to any of this. This is all just completely separate in its yeah. own way. Like I I can understand whether you have the option to to interconnect the growers and connect it to that, or you can you know you can connect it to the sprinklers and the sprinklers can water something like yeah. that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I um. I can say something that this was discussed again another another thing where this has been discussed no promises whatever but to the to the modifications um there we could do something like in Factoria where you have like your personal assistance drones um we could do something where um where like if there's an annoying thing that you have to leg like uh buckets from place A to place B or something like that that you could have like a personal drone do that while you're mining or something like that. That is something that um, we are aware of and has been noted down. Mm -hmm. um, so I, that could I be cut. Mm -hmm. Figuring out your drone pathing first before. No, 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 it's fine. Sure, it'll be like fine. That. No, whatever, dude. Just more drones. Fuck it, whatever. Minibot. <laughs> <laughs> what uh... Mini -bot. Oh yeah, Russ. That there was. It's on. It's in another file. But this was something that I noticed as well. Um, again, when we just when we were talking about uh, grid snapping on construction, uh, I had I had a platform done right. Uh, base, basically, stairs like this, just leading up to a floating platform of of floor tiles. Everything was fine, but then when I reloaded, this strange gap occurred at, within the snapping if you know what i mean basically the floor is like just gapped apart at the at the mm. seam like so where one connects to the new, to the other there was just this line gap that appeared and even ripping it down and and doing it again didn't do anything it was like the, it was like the map grid had moved somehow compared in compared to the, the the platform snapping grid you know what i mean i don't know if there's two separate grids or something but yeah it seemed as though the grid itself or whatever way the snapping works could again be looked at in some way yeah yeah that that's gonna that is something we're gonna be doing um that is also richest kind of end of stuff that i think is gonna be developed in the next update too okay. are you done in here uh, phoenix is there anything else you want to show no all done okay i just knew that we had a save that showed exactly what you were complaining about yeah yeah <laughs> um so yeah i mean look, look that 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 was uh the complaint if i don't know if you could call it a complaint but just given that as i said I, yeah, I will say that with some games you look at <laughs> honestly speed runners are the best ones to look at mm. you look at some speed run things and they've got like seven machines for satisfactory and it blows my mind yeah, that that's something that you can do, but it's also the most efficient and the most fastest. Mm. That being said, that style of gameplay should be limited to people who are going for that world record. It shouldn't just be the best way to play. Mm. Yeah. Okay, well, I am probably going to head off soon. Um, okay. Does anyone have any closing questions or yeah i got one Tell, we we <laughs> gotta we gotta end with a hot take russell what you got any hot takes for us um just oh, have any hot takes. Uh, seeing, seeing as we end on a hot take i just have one quick question uh unrelated to junk punk but related to focus group um you mentioned that you're looking to probably set one up for gunsmith down the line is that any closer or is there any more on the cards for it to prepare um, for or I I can I can DM you about that. Yeah. Um. You do you remember the thing I said I can't publicly discuss? Oh yeah um, yeah 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 yeah. That's that's coming. Uh. That yeah 
so yeah. I'll be able to discuss that soon more. Yeah, but yeah, 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 I can't comment on it. No comment for right now. Yeah, okay. No, that's good. All right, so hot take. <laughs> hot take. Russell, give us give us some some hot takes. Oh man. Let it, to to give you some context, the last one uh we did was um I said that uh we should move to everything to standard time because in America only two states uh go by standard time everything else just goes central time not cst so like someone in mexico who's in my same time zone um is one hour uh behind me ahead of me um and i think every th every state in america sh should just be standard time uh but i also said the uh i forgot i think it was like i hate i hate weight and height um in the metric system uh but i like everything else in the metric system um so yeah that that was that that those were our hot takes for the for the last one <laughs> interesting <laughs> as i keep hammering it to you pun intended hammer time is a very free no, no, no. That no yeah that's my hot take i'm never using hammer time i'm just gonna manually do it i'm gonna you about it <laughs> babe <laughs> all right russell man i my mind is blank <laughs> <laughs> I guess the, the hottest question of them all that you're probably going to hear every time it happens. Yeah. Is there any idea of a date, a quarter, a time of the year for when Monolith 1 rework could happen? Could happen or, or actually be, be announced and done? <sighs> yeah. See, I, I I've been told instructions to to not say anything, but I I kind of want to say like <laughs> something because pe people need to hear something. No, that, um, I, yeah, that, I wouldn't I wouldn't say anything here I then. <laughs> no, but last thing last thing is not to upset. Don't don't upset Russ <laughs> or Rich. I was just gonna no, say. No, 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 no. I, I, don't, I don't I don't think he'd be upset, but I, I I can say that like it will be done. At at least, or at most, I guess. By the end of summer, Ooh. but that is like the maximum end point. That that is like okay the based bait goal line is summer. Yeah, I would end be like I, I would be amazed if like <laughs> I'm talking like if we were still making this in like late August. There's something seriously wrong with our mm. company. <laughs> okay. Just got this gut wrench. I just got this that gut wrench. Stronger than what I would have said. I was just gonna say like, oh, there's gonna be a lot of work done on it soon, or something general like that. Good yeah, shit. Yeah, no, there is, there is. But, um, I just like, got. You know, everyone, make sure we you can't... sign your NDAs on the way out. I just got this gut wrenching feeling like Richard is after waking up to his ears burning down. Someone's discussing NDAs. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm like we can't keep like putting stuff off so you know we are very much yeah. going to be like all hands on deck um, mm. pushing for this so yeah and i don't want to keep putting off either i don't, I don't want to kevin is looking at me like what have you done god damn like we actually now this is hype i love this like yeah no so i yeah no, so no okay. to give some background kevin is very much like the way that you worded that because it's if we don't have it out by <laughs> the end of august that yeah is something wrong with that and yeah I'd because like when when, when was the last update before this right it, like we don't talk about I, that here yeah, we, <laughs> we don't talk <laughs> about bruno, bruno. I, I think it's like close to i think it was like eight months ago or something but that yeah, might have been two right. months ago so probably like 10 months ago bordering on yeah. a year that, the that, biggest reason why i like that is that it could be a few weeks from now because i'm not going to say like next week could be a few weeks from now because you have a big breakthrough and everything gets sown really quickly, or it could be during the summertime. Mm -hmm. We don't uh, want to. Yeah, I, that, that's why I said that. That's that's a, yeah, I think it could be. It could be post August, but I feel like if if we have got to that point, then you know we need to just get our shit together. Like something is <laughs> something's going wrong. <laughs> yeah, uh, um, I am not your manager, but. <laughs> Yeah, I, I will say some more background. Like, I went to Russell um, a little bit ago, and I was like, oh, you know what we could do? We could, like, plan out, um, like, we can trickle some information out and, um, uh, like, tri like 
like plan out like hey we leak like this thing in may this thing in um june this thing in july whatever and kind of get like an idea uh of when we release and just like make a really conservative release date and then like the last two videos that have been posted have just like leaked like 90 percent of the stuff i know about i'm like yeah oh shit, all right great dude we're talking about it yeah, great we, we, we don't have to be restrained yeah. at all so yeah i love that yeah yeah, yeah man so yeah um, I will... we, we should also be progressively releasing like more steam updates on like when content is getting more finalized like mm -hmm. you know we got the scrap drones screenshots stuff like that we're mm -hmm. going to be hopefully yeah Maybe. Week in, week out, putting out more stuff like that. Uh, even for a, putting e together a Steam post for that alone, the scrap yeah. drones. Yeah. Maybe even for a for a for a public uh, if it's possible, like for a public live update, which is not which which constantly goes, see what Rich thinks about releasing um, whether it be to Discord, Steam, or uh, a link that you can travel to um, a a public available Scrum board where the actual live. Um, ideas are, are are on the but only obviously not everything but those which could be publicly available um i suppose to kind of keep the the worry at ease like you know people are aware of what's there and what's ongoing and uh and then obviously the update videos will kind of lay more contrast on top of those yeah 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 i, yeah. I like that idea my only my immediate concern would be oh yeah like um let's say five people have access have access to edit the scrum board and like what i do is i put in like hey here's problem a and here's solutions one two and three mm -hmm. and um then like person like rich season is like no, no no we're not touching this for like uh two updates like and then axes it completely from the scrum board and then like two people see that from the community and there's a lot of confusion so yeah i, I feel like that would take a lot of time to implement if we did, but I do like the idea of um, of that, and I like the feeling. Um, the feeling I try to do uh, with like community stuff is I say like, "Hey, here are some ideas we introduced," but I don't know if like putting it on a scrum board might make people think it's more official than it actually is because if people mm. saw uh, like our board. Um, I, I don't know if people would say like, oh my god, like Fernari put that like um I, I can't think of an example right off the top of my head, but Fernari put like this drone pathing solution, like this is this is happening, guys, like get hype and stuff like that. So yeah, I don't know. Mm. Um I don't know the ramifications of that. But I do like the idea and I do like the feeling of it regardless. Mm -hmm. I think I heard Dixie was trying to say something. Oh sorry, yeah, I didn't nope. Not me. Okay. No, she was just. No, <laughs> she was just. You must have heard that. Heard the thoughts leaking out of my head. <laughs> she did come in. She just saw my my cat. Like so, she's a bit excited. No, it wasn't me that commented that. Wasn't it? Who the hell commented? I thought that was Dixie. No, it wasn't me. Well, I I did have a thought that I haven't I shared, and this will be my hot take. Oh, uh, cats it was Phoenix. Stuck. <laughs> They're stinky. I don't cats, like them. Oh, man. I'm a dog person. Give me all the dogs. Five you have to give dogs. Them equal love. You go to hell. Yeah. You go to hell and you die. I lost, <laughs> I, I lost both of my cats one, in one year. The one was twelve. One was thirteen last mm. year. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. Now I'm stuck. Now I'm stuck with my son's psycho cat. <laughs> anyway, as it is less than fifteen minutes to when devs have to go off. Mm. Is there anything final from our community? Oh, one thing. I'm not a dev, by the way. I don't know how to program whatsoever. <laughs> if I've done I'm also technically a designer. Of, so. Oh, based. <laughs> yeah. I've done one line of code in my life, and that's to ping a server in command prompt. So uh, don't. <laughs> if you ever say like, "Hey, why is this not working? Why is this bug a thing?" I don't know, but I'll I'll tell the devs that it's a bug, and that's about it. No, I'm I'm guilty of knowing too much and not telling. <laughs> <laughs> I know my way around XMLs. XML, oh god! For me, it's it, for me, it's Java. Oh, and the old DOS. Oh, DOS, Jesus! But that's that's aging myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, with all that, then, guys, I think we're uh, I think we're good to finish up, and um, I look forward to the next chat for whoever drops in. Hope you know, hopefully both Russell and maybe Richard will be would uh, um, you know, gracious with his presence. Um, yeah, I, I'd, I'd, yeah I'd, I'd I'd be happy to keep doing this kind of thing. Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah, bro. If you keep if you keep going, Umbrella, you're gonna have like half of the company in like a month in these calls, man. <laughs> Jesus. I, I will say for the purposes of scheduling, like maybe schedule a big one with Russell and maybe others mm -hmm. once a month. Yeah. Yeah, if, the, I, if, if I mean, look at like I'd, I'd say do pace it. Like, given that, I what yeah, I will what, what, I, what, I, what I will say is that like I I'm not boasting, but I started out on the uh, on um gunsmith and I was actively posting stuff I was doing there. Like, and I really did want to get the community involved. I thought the community was fairly quiet and fairly silent, and I was glad to see that that's kind of progressed here with Jung Punk. Where here we are, like I've. You know, I was lucky enough to be invited to do a focus group, and here we are. Like, here's here's the community actually making a bit of noise, getting together, and actually having a discussion and a bit of a play, which which I love because, again, from from I and I do hope that down the line I I can do the same with Gunsmith. So it's kind of, and it has been very like careful treading to get to where, get to what we have now. So I would I, I would say that yeah, sure, by all means, let's let's have a hope for you know a, a bigger a bigger get together maybe with the company or Rich and and Russell down the line, but pacing obviously is key, and you know the niceties of it is to be appreciated as well. Yep, yeah, Rich will Rich will be made aware of this uh, for sure, um, and uh, we'll we'll see uh, and go from there. But uh, yeah, also as as a side note, right now what we're doing is basically when we have news, we'll do one of these after, um, or if there's like a large community demand for it. Um, but yeah, I don't like for Jung Punk. It would make sense to do these like every other week until Monolith One uh gets updated. But for like Gunsmith, uh, like at the moment, like doing things once a month would be uh would be too much. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, like it it depends a lot on like what what we're working on as well. And like obviously when we're closer to releasing, either when we just started working on something or we're when we're wrapping up, we'll have a lot more. Um, and then. Uh, have less when we're when when we're kind of in, in the middle of stuff or in the planning phase or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that the uh again future stuff that I do want to I per I love this shit. I love uh just talking, mm. um, yeah. and whatnot. So yeah, but uh we do I need to figure out a way uh and talk with people to figure out a way to like schedule these properly and see like how big of a deal we should make about this or uh if like we just like having like 10 people see it or whatever but yeah i mean there are discord events that is an option but that's mm. true yeah and you could even like you know use hammer time and post the time yeah. that it's gonna be <laughs> but yeah. you know what i'm never doing it baby <laughs> and that's the end of the video all Sweet. right guys <laughs> russell thanks so much for coming no on uh, I'm, I'm, good. Out. I'm glad we did this yeah, yeah. So I, uh, um, i'll i'll message you a bit uh if you guys have any feedback uh for this call any uh comments questions concerns criticisms anything like that uh, i'm gonna message russell and see what he thought if anyone was talking too much too little uh if we <laughs> asked him illegal <laughs> questions that should know yeah who'd have heard <laughs> Yeah, uh, Phoenix, you're gone. I'm we, so sorry. We are free to ask as many questions as we want. You're the ones who have to provide the answers. Yeah, to me, I said to me, yeah, Russell is Russell has his um, uh, his band hammer at the at the hip. <laughs> I'll um, um, I I will get this posted up as soon as possible as well, Kev. So just to if in case I need a devs around one like that, want to play catch up and look at it. So yeah. Um, sure. Yeah, look, uh, if we're all done, then um, I'm going to end it here. And thanks, guys, for coming and playing. And Russ, nice to meet you. Can't look yeah, forward to meet you again. To all of you guys as well. And Kev, yeah. thanks thanks again. Of course. Uh, Phoenix, Dixie. Out, so. Nice seeing you again. Yeah. yeah. Same. Thanks, for, thanks for joining, guys. Uh, your extra questions are always uh, always enjoyable. Uh, except when you talk about hammer time, but other than that, uh, it's great. <laughs> I'll keep talking about it. <laughs> All right, see you guys. See you guys. Thanks, care, Thanks very much. It's been great. Bye bye. Bye y'all. Bye.